Back here at Bee Builder here. Today I wanted to go over one of the methods you can use for rendering wax. Um, if you look here, I've got a pot full of my scraped off honeycomb. Um, now I've already cooked this up and I've gotten the majority of the honey out of it, so it's ready to render. Um, all I'm going to do here is go ahead and put it into my double boiler. Um, so in here is just some water and I'm putting this pan inside of this other one. I found these two pans that fit together. Um, they're just canning pans, so I really like using those ones, but um, they work well. Now this is recommended to do outside because um, the wax is extremely flammable. If you have an option to do it outside, I would definitely do that. Um, today I am going to do it inside. Um, I don't have very much wax in there, so the likelihood of it uh, popping out is is low. However, um, it's best to do it outside if you have that option. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and just cook it down um, and you can come along with me and kind of watch how the process is done. Before I get the cooking process started, I'm going to go ahead and add water to this. Usually I'll do a one-to-one -one ratio on this, so one part water, one part wax. The water all is going to do is kind of absorb all the dirt and the grime that's in, in the wax. And so when I boil it, the water will uh, retain all of the undesirable things so that the big chunks will sink to the bottom and the wax will float to the top. So let's go ahead and start the process. Now one big thing to consider when you're doing this is do not let it boil. Um, maybe this is something that's common knowledge but when I first rendered my my wax um, I didn't realize that that was an issue. If you let this concoction boil the water bubbles will actually go inside of your wax and you'll end up with this spongy wax that's really difficult to um, Get the moisture out of it. When you're doing it, just keep it on a low, low heat. Be patient. It's going to take a long time for it to melt down and really when, render well. However, it's going to be a lot better than messing up your wax. So just keep it on low and let it cook out um, for a few hours and we'll come back and check on it in a bit. Okay, as you can see here, it's starting to warm up a little bit. Um, it's definitely starting to throth, throth a little bit and it's just made this kind of a soup um, of the dirty water and, and wax. Keeping it stirred during this process will help it melt down faster. Okay, it is all melted down. So I'm going to go ahead and send it through a strainer. Okay, so I've just taken the melted wax out of here and poured it into this bucket with a cheesecloth over the top of it. Um, that's going to filter out the most of the most of the gunk out of there, and then I'll go ahead and repeat the process so uh, I'll be able to get the wax a little bit cleaner. There's still a lot of good wax in here, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to leave it in the bag and just boil it in some fresh water. That'll take all of the wax out of the bag and just leave the gunk left behind. Now after I've gotten what wax I think I can out of my filtering bag, I will go ahead and replace all the water and wax back into my double boiler. And I'm just going to go ahead and start the process over again to re-render it. Um, so I'll go ahead and melt it all down and send it through a filter again. Um, now this can be done two or three times depending on how clean you want your wax to be. Um, and you can use smaller and smaller filters. Um, if that's what you desire, but it usually doesn't take more than two or three times for me to do it in order to get it clean. Um, once you have gotten it clean enough, you can let it sit overnight and it will turn into a wax cake. I mean, you can just pull it right off the top because the wax will float to the surface and the water will stay down below. And it just comes out in a little cake. You can tell you're done rendering if you look at the water underneath and it is quite clear. And that's a good indicator that you've gotten most of the dirt. Now there will be some residue of dirt and grime on the bottom of your cake, but you can just scrape that off before you melt it down for the final time. Okay, so now that I've got my wax all cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and put it into um, this slow cooker that I have. It's just my wax pot that I use only for this purpose. Um, but I will put it in here and just let it melt it down so I can put it into smaller bricks um, that are easily stored. Okay, now that my wax is all melted down, I can pour it into molds. Now the molds I really like to use are these silicone pans. Um, they work really well for wax because once the wax hardens, sometimes it can be hard to get them out of the mold. But this makes it easy to just pop them out without any trouble. 
So this is kind of my last rendering process. So when I'm pouring the wax into the molds, there'll usually be a little bit of residue left in the bottom of the pan. So I'll just make sure that I don't pour that out when I'm pouring the wax into the molds. Um, this will make sure that my wax is really clean. Then just let your wax cool and you will get a brick of wax all rendered and clean and ready to use for whatever you would like. Um, and there are even smaller sections that you can use, cupcake size pans that if you want a smaller brick that can be used for smaller projects but um, if you have a large amount it's nice to have some bigger bricks that you can store it in um, so this is the backyard bee builder i hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful and hope to see you next time thanks bye